exploring a teaching that is titled Understanding the Pathways to Sanctification. We are looking at part 2B this morning. Understanding the Pathways to Sanctification. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8. I would like us to read it together. I want to go. And I will shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The ugly shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those. The way for any man, though fool, shall not err their name. And I will shall be there, and a way, not ways, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The pathway to sanctification is the pathway to holiness. There is a pathway to holiness. There is a pathway to godliness. There is a pathway to sanctification. And there is also the pathway to ungodliness. There is a pathway to wickedness. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14, it says, Enter not into the paths of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. There is a pathway to righteousness. The pathway to sanctification is the pathway to righteousness. In Psalm 1 verse 1, he said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of ungodly, nor standeth in the way. Can you just look at that scripture? Shall we read it together? One to go. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinner, nor seated in the seat of the scoffer, the way of sinners. There is the way of the saint, and there is the way of the sinners. You cannot be in between. It's either you're on the path to righteousness or you're on the path to unrighteousness. There is a pathway to sanctification ordained by God. Why? Because sanctification is the will of God. It doesn't take a struggle to live a life of sanctification. It only requires following the way, following the way of sanctification. You will live a sanctified life. Because the way you follow the type of the life you live. The lifestyle of man is a product of the way of life he follows. You can't follow the way of sinners and live a sanctified life. You can't follow the way of ungodly and be godly. It has its own way. It has its own way. Godliness has its path. Because the path you tread, 
the time at the end of your life. He has his path. The question is, which path are you following? Which way are you following? Which path are you treading? No matter how prayerful you are, you can't tread the path of sinner and not sink. And you cannot tread the path of the saint and not shine. It's either you are sinking or you are shining. It's either you are sinking or you are flying. There is a path to godliness. And there is a path to ungodliness. There is a path to sanctification. And there is a path to domination. That is why the path you follow, you choose to follow. Praise the Lord. You choose. The path you are not following, you choose not to follow it. That is why sanctification is not by force, it's by choice. But it is the choice of the wise. Praise the Lord. Are you with that all? It is what? The choice of the wise. It is the choice of the wise. What is sanctification? the pathways to sanctification. What is a sanctification? Number one. Sanctification is a deliberate cleansing of oneself and environment was leave from the infiltrations of uncleanness. Sanctification is a deliberate cleansing of oneself and the environment one leave for infiltrations of what of uncleanness. Men and brethren, negative things are infiltrated to our life on daily basis. Negative things, unclean things are infiltrated into our lives or day-to-day life. That is why when you own your phone, you don't determine what to enter, but you can determine what you watch. Are you with me at all? Are you in church? If I say, oh, pressure, bring out your phone now, all your phone now, and all your data. And before you know it, Something will be leaking to a to a doing honor, infiltrating. But you can't determine what enters there when you own your data, but you can determine what you watch from the data. Am I right? Negative things are infiltrated into our life with our eyes open. And if you don't get rid of this abominable things, God will get rid of you. That's why sanctification is a deliberate cleansing of one's head and one's environment from the infiltrations of uncleanness. There are things you need to separate yourself from if you don't want God to separate yourself from you. Isaiah 52 verse 11 He said the bad day, the bad day Go out from them. Touch no unclean things. Go ye out of the midst of Allah. Be ye clean that be ye the vessel of the Lord. Genuine sanctification is a total cleansing. Cleansing of your life and cleansing of your environment. As a child of God, what are you doing with the Apollo? For example, even though you are not drinking, as 
you are coming out of pain, it will be said that you are drunk. Am I right? Now, hear this now. As your pastor, what have I been there for? No. <laughs> no. Somebody say, oh, pastor, I am in there, pastor. come and see me there. Come and meet me there. Or you want to book an appointment with me in there, pastor. Even though I did not drink anything, as I'm coming out of bed, you will be questioning yourself. What is my pastor doing here? What did they find here? He don't know say that this thing don't belong to this kind of person. Praise the Lord. My cash are not too wasted. Read with me what to do. Arise here and depart. For this is not a rest. Because it is polluted. It shall destroy you with what so what destruction. Cleansing of your, of your life and cleansing of your environment from the infiltrations of uncleanness. Many of us, sir, we want to live a sanctified life, but our environment is not sanctified. Your friends are your environment. Your friend, I what? Your environment. Your environment have been polluted. Why would you pollute it? Your environment has been contaminated. Why would you be contaminated? May I ask you this question? If your house is not clean, if your house is not clean, will you go there? Will you enter into a room that is full of house life? I'm asking you. Will you lie on the bed that is full of house life? In Gigi everywhere. House life everywhere. Let us also. How do you expect God to do it in you? Because you are the environment of humanity. You are his temple. You are his house. How? If we are not clean, God cannot do it in us. That's why we sanctification is a deliberate cleansing of ourselves and what's environment. Number two, what is sanctification? Sanctification is a conscious cleansing from anything that defies and disqualifies individual before God, thereby affecting one relationship with God, the cause not to be stuck. It's a conscious cleansing from anything that defies and disqualifies individual before God. Thereby affecting one relationship with God, the cost notwithstanding. Cleansing yourself from anything that disqualifies. Cleansing yourself from anything that defies. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 43 to 44. He said, you shall not make yourself abominable with any creeping things that creeps. Neither shall you make yourself unclean with them that you should be defied what they buy. Everybody read verse 44 together with me one to go. For I am the Lord. Read, are you in church? Read with me one to go. For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourself and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourself with any manner of people day that keep breath upon the earth. Things disqualify. That are things that disqualify us before God. That affect our relationship with God. Blessing yourself for anything that defies. They cost not to stand it. Blessing yourself for anything that is qualified. The cost of that thing not what we stand it. There are many things 
in our course study that is chasing gods away from us. We need to get rid of them. Praise the Lord. We know what? To get rid of them. What is it? That is qualified. That are close to where now that the place of God will leave you. That are close now in your in your bosses. But whenever you wear it, the presence of God shut down on you. And the Spirit of God is telling you, get rid of these things. Get rid of this material. That I item now in your custody now. How can you claim you are a child of God and they still give you that this man? They gave you bamboos. No. Wear it be on the waist. Wear it chain on your leg. No, sir. Ask yourself this question. Does this thing glorify God? Does this thing edify God? Whatever in your in your shop that you know is not of God, remove it. Remove what? Remove it. Remove it. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. It may be a paper, it may be anything. Get rid of them, brother. These are the things that disqualify you before God. These are the things that divide. I remember. The year 2000 and uh, it was 2008 precisely. I was in Oka Church, Living Free Church, Oka, that time. I was in my office, my account, the church accountant gave me an envelope. And he said, Pastor, this envelope is for you. Now, whatever you need to offset in your house, you can do it. I collected the envelope. My spirit man did not agree with him. And we turned back. He went to wake my pastor, my resident pastor. He said, Sir, I gave him more. He refused to go to. And uh, Pastor met me. He said, Oh, Pastor, there's nothing bad about it. Take it from me. Whatever you need. My spirit man did not agree for me to collect it. Do you know, men and brethren? There was need in the house. If I had to return this thing back again, I will move a job for my own guy. I kept it in my drawer. It was there for days. I told my wife. I said they gave me something, but my spirit man did not concur. The currency, the current in my in my heart does not flow, does not agree with the currency that they give me. In one week, when is this service? I decide. I said, Father, I was given this, and I'm returning it now. I put the envelope, wrote special seat on the envelope. I took it in the offering. Men and women, <laughs> nobody was there. It was me and God. I dropped the money, sir. I dropped the, I dropped the envelope in the offering bag. During office hour, during uh, service time. Immediately after service. One of our pastors just left my office, a pastor assistant. He said, Pastor, Jay, how far now? I said, Fine. What the name? I said, Oh, this and this are the name. He's okay. He said, We just walk into the toilet. They can't take some money and give it to me. Men and brethren. How much did they give me? 20,000. 
I'm going to that door. Ten thousand. I brought the envelope back to the re-owner of the envelope. And when the end, when I dropped it, sir, and said, uh -huh, I will touch another man to compensate you. I took it back and they, he gave me back in less than 12 hours. He said to me, this There are things that in your custody that God has closed his eyes in his prayer. May God open your eyes to it. Sanctification is a, is a responsibility. Cleansing yourself for anything that defies, for anything that disqualifies. Something happened. I bought a pillow. It's spiritual. I bought about five pillow about last week. That was one last week. I saw the man carrying it here. Yeah, I bought the pillow. And uh, I bought five. And I took it home. And uh, first day, second day, we were using it. And uh, that was day before yesterday. Day before yesterday. I shared the pillow in all the, in all the rooms. And uh, day before yesterday, my wife just woke, woke up. No, and the hope. Do you know what he told me? What she told me? He said, I saw a witch carpet in sitting on one of the people in the room. He said, I saw a witch carpet sitting on one of the people. I woke up, I was angry. I said, I lifted up the five pillow. I said, Father, it is the pillow I bought to not witch carpet. <laughs> I said, Father, in that night, I said, it is pillow I bought to. It's not with it. I don't like witchcraft. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, every infiltration of witchcraft into this house. I shot it one day. I now am not, I sanctified the pillow one after the other. That was what I supposed to have done before I use it, which I didn't do. Praise the Lord. Oh, oh, can you pick with up now? Yes, sir. That was what I supposed to have done, but I didn't do. And I did that. Sanctification. Cleansing. Everything. One of my, one of our pastors here, gave me this, bought this, Bible for me. And uh, as he bought it for me, oh, he came to the office and gave it to me. Me one. He says, ah, this is the second week for the third time. I'm buying this. I had a witness to me. And he gave it to me. And I had a witness. I should drop it on the altar. Let it be there for seven weeks. Huh? Let it be what? Let it be there for seven days. I did open it. I had that witness. Let it be there for seven days. No there. I kept it there. Building on it. Go cooking so that any time I open it. Sanctification. May God give you understanding. Amen. Like sin. There is nothing that separates God from us like sin. 
You can relate well with God when you live in sin. Am I right? Therefore, what are the costs of ungodliness? Number one. Sinfulness attracts sickness. Ha <laughs> 
the story of a brother. He went for lab test. Listen, he went for lab test. And uh, the diabetes. At the end of the test, and he went for the results. When the result came, and the results showed that he was HIV what? Positive. He was smart. Ah! He got angry with himself. He said, therefore, I will, I will share it with everything else. Listen when I'm ready. Real life story. He was not sleeping with girls. That I don't know how I got it. Everyone that gets connected with him must contact it. It was in the sleeping with girls that he contacted HIV. And when the lab, they, they called him. When the lab called him, they now told him that, oh, we are very sorry that the result we gave you is not your results. They call it Hapa. That was it, man. May God help you, sir. Live right. Live what? Because illness is the companion of the ungodly. Illness is the portion of the ungodly. a major barrier to healing. Until you repent, you can be healed. That's why you need to call. You need to repent. Lord, I know I, I, I fear your have mercy so that you can be healed. James chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Number 2. Shamefulness resists people's virtue. The cost of unbelief. Sinfulness resists people's breakthrough. Ungodliness resists the breakthrough of man. How do I know? Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25. Everybody read with me. One, two, go. Your iniquity have torn away these things. And you see as we told him who pays from you. So you see now that God is not a problem. You say your iniquity have gone away your breakthrough. Your see as we tell who pays from you. I watched a clip the other time. The platform I was privileged, the platform they added me, they sent a video clip of a girl. This girl had been married for five years. And they and they offer leave offshore, travel abroad and come back. And the lady says, since she has got married, she has been sleeping with the father-in-law because he has a big manhood. That was his problem. Uh, that was a problem. That she fall in love with people that have that room. <laughs> Can you see people that have problem? <laughs> that is why most of our calamity is a function of our covetousness. Huh? Huh? Most of our, our calamity, they are function of what our convert onion Now, now, if all five sons are aware that the wife is sleeping with, her, with his own father for five good years, no child. She went to a prophet, a pastor. It was in the course of the pastor praying for her that 
the God revealed to the pastor that this is what you are doing with your father-in-law. If you don't confess, you cannot have a child. That was why she came on the platform. Sir. She began to confess. Sir. Now, iniquity resists a pregnancy. Iniquity is a resistor. They call it a, a spiritual resistor. It is not the devil that resisting you, it's your iniquity that says no to you. I had the story of a lady about 30 years ago. Before she gave her life to Christ, she, was, she lived a, 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 a useless life. I bought to get peace like anything. Now she has given her life to Christ. Now she's born again. Now she's married, but no child. She began to move from prayer house to prayer house from a man of God to a man of God. And she got to my spiritual father. It was in the course of praying for her that God opened his eyes and he began to hear the voice of little baby cry. No! And he asked the lady, he said, my daughter, I am hearing the voice of little girl, little baby cry. Cry against you. What happened? And the lady burst into tears. He says, sir, before I gave my life to Christ, I am a portrait number one, number two. What was the cry of the babies? They cried, oh God, don't answer. That, dear me, sir, it is not a point soon that is your problem. It is iniquity that is your problem. Why? Because unconfessing is resisting your faith. Can you just imagine? The guy met me in Benin. What was his problem? I think he stole what? I don't want thousand and that. It should be one thousand and those days now for somebody. And uh, took the one thousand and that. And from a woman met about. And, uh, and he denied that he's not the one that took that, took that one thousand and that. Years has gone by. And something is telling him. The, the brain behind your calamity is the one thousand and you stole. You need to go and recover it back. Yes, you are impregnant. Yes, you are shot. Yes, you are gathered. Yes, you are beautiful. But you are not breaking through. Why? It is not because of superiority of satanic activity. No, because of the life you live that is speaking against you. And that is why today, Lord, whatever life I have lived that is speaking against me in my current life, let your mercy. Iniquity is in the system. It resists people's breakthrough. It resists people's advancement. The question is, what is resisting you? When the seed barrier is undue, breakthrough is guaranteed. When the seed question is undue, breakthrough is what? Guaranteed. There are individuals in my voice now that God is saying to you, go and confess to your husband. Go and confess to the wife. I shared a story with us. That was on Wednesday. A brother. The wife is in her brother. Why is in Nigeria here? Let her be married. The wife is in her brother. Married. And he has been waiting, believing God for visa to, to relocate to abroad to go and meet the wife. And whereas the one, why he was in Nigeria here, he was there on Wednesday day, in Nak, and the team Nak. <laughs> and he had a child here. He had believing God to go to abroad for more than 10 years. 
no visa sir. He went. I don't know how him and my wife met. By the spirit of God, my wife said, this problem you are going to now, your visa will not come if you don't open up to your wife in a problem. Say, mommy, it will be too difficult to, he said, God is telling me if you open up your way, open. It was a struggle for him to open up. At the end of the day, he someone of it, he said, whatever that wants to happen, let it happen. And he called the wife. Please, there is something I did here. I just want to open up to you. The wife said, what is it? There is somebody I met here. I impregnated the lady and the lady had the charge for me. Please, forgive me. And the wife said, any other thing, he said nothing. Any other thing, he said nothing. And any other thing to it, he said nothing. This is no problem. When I'm ready. And that was how. He confessed. The door opened. This time came. He showed it to you. As I'm telling you now, the guy is in the USA. Man, the visa he had been looking for the past 10 years sir, came on the platter. Did you get what I'm As he repented, his door opened. What is it that God is telling you to do? That you are saying, ah, if I say it, how would they feel? If God is the one telling you to say it, forget about how they will feel. Are you with that all? If God is telling you, go and drop it in the church, you better drop it before you are not there. As I'm telling you, sir, I pray with him today, today, today. He said, Dad, I just want to give no praise. Today is in USA. Past his view, West, he repented. Mommy came from nowhere. And to God be the glory, is with his real wife. Say, real wife. No, no, I won't. The question is, who lose her? Hello. Now, this I keep losing. Because you have been tempted and you have been what? Wounded. And your foot on my shoulder. It don't come out. Help me to ask your people, what is resisting you? You have to confess. For that resistance to stop, sir, you have to confess. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. The devil got by Joshua, the pastor for that matter, with Philip Gabe. He said he showed me everybody will be able to go. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angels of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand, resist him. Verse 2. Verse 2 together, one to go. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord will be me. Oh Satan, even the Lord that took in Jerusalem will be. Is it not this a man plucked out of the fire? Verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garment and stood before the angel. He was clothed with a long garment. Something but clothed with a dirty garment. There are many in churches across the globe. Serving God in a dirty room. That is why cleansing is needed. Sanctification work is needed. And number three for many. Number three. Number one, sinfulness. Do what? Act that what? Sickness. Number two, sinfulness. Resist what? Breakthrough. Number three, sinfulness resists eternity with God. 
is a blocker, is a resistor. Sin will not allow you to go forward. Sin will not allow you to make heaven. It's enter your eternity with divinity. Iniquity is an enemy of divinity. Iniquity is an enemy of eternity with divinity. Revelation 21 verse 8. Revelation 21 verse 8. The book of Revelation 21 verse 8. Read with me what to go. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderer and the warmonger and the sorcerer and the idolaters and all life shall have their part in the lake with burning with fire and brimstone, which is what the second day. That will not be our portion. Amen. When I was in Ghana. A Ghanaian brother met me and shared this scripture with me. He said, he said, also for that he passed on. He said, the day I saw in the Bible that all liars will go to hell. He said, to, to, I stop what lie. He said, to lie because what difficult. White lie, white lie, a glow lie, empty lie, yellow lie, a career lie, Oh, oh, no, we need to put it there. Oh, if you are a liar, this disease from today, disease, and, and tell yourself, Lord Christ, to say the truth. Now, let's put that now. When you use one uh, botanical language to confuse your village, they have paid the money before. Are you, are <laughs> you know that the, <laughs> the old man they go to school and the old man they go to school and you are not using botanical language you say they say we should buy some something you call the me even for your mother to pronounce it very long <laughs> they say how much is he says five thousand he said your dad was seven thousand Botanical language. That is okay. Am I right? Uh, but you use it to confront him. You use it to confront him. In order for you to collect more money, you have to lie to collect more money. No, sir. This money, some of us are pushing. It's not to take us forever. So that. The, the life we are going to live here, this temporal life, we can live this temporal life. It's a temporary life. It's what? A temporal life, sir. May I ask you this question now? You are studying your PhD in this school now. Yeah, how old are you? How many years are you going to be that PhD certificate? Ask yourself this question. Some are here, it's 20 years. Some, as I'm talking to you now, now, now. The maximum that you are going to use your certificate in this school is 20 years. Why? With your age now, with your age. The moment you are 60, 65, it expires. Huh? Can federal government employ you with your uh, PAD at the age of 65? No, the way you are looking at me. No. Can they employ that little something? Huh? Why now? Why do you want to use temporary pain to enter your head for retirement? Temporary eternal. I don't say that so that you for you to know that there is nothing special in this water. That should be a barrier to your eternity with God. Money is temporal. Are you with me at all? I had a story yesterday that shocked me. The daughter of Adola became a god in Lagos. Yeah? The daughter of what? Adola became what? A security guard. 
His father was one time billionaire in Africa. Where is the money? No. All this you are pursuing is just to make it happen.